Alright, started a little later today, but we can pick up where we started yesterday. Um, so yesterday we built a chat room where, let's see, if you go to the server, you can click on, I can go to the chat room. And then I should be able to type hello world. And that should send a request to the server. So yesterday when that when you type something and you hit enter, it should send a request to the server. So here's the request. Okay. So we're able to send the request to the server and yesterday we got stuck over here um, in the server when we did io.broadcast.admit it's actually just io.admit so this admits an event so yesterday we had io.broadcast.admit and that that's wrong okay so it's just io.admit then this admits to everybody there's a new user. Cool. So our chat room um, UI is more or less done. So let's look at our Kanban board. UI is done. Next, we need to add chat messages and data structure. Um, let's see where we are at yesterday. So the UI is done. I'm going to delete this. We pretty much have a left side and the right side. And inside the right side, which is the content div, we have three things in there, the title, the messages, and the input. Right, so we style each of these three, and then we're done. So when designing CSS, you start from the outside, and then you go in. Yeah. So this is done, so I can delete this one. And then yesterday we also went over what is the difference between requests, sending requests, getting responses, and using socket IO. Um, it's just sending requests, you have to send a request every second to get message to see if there's a new message. But then with socket IO, server can just push all the events to everybody. So let's delete this because it's unnecessary now and then we can move all this up okay so yesterday we got to the point where nice when someone logs in um, I'm able to see everybody who's logged in so I'm I'm going to go to the website Again, it's going to be certain.com. And then I'm going to log in as Blastoise. Blastoise. So give me a second. I'm going to log in as Blastoise. Cool. And see how Blastoise showed up when Blastoise logged in. And then when I leave, Blastoise is gone. Okay, so everybody who's online works. Um, now I should be able to see foundations of JavaScript. Um, okay. Cool. So all the chat rooms. So here we have built the chat room so that as I type and I hit enter it sends a request um, and then on the front end let's see let's review that because I don't remember so whenever I send a request it takes my name that comes from the session so here's the user and then I get all the chat messages in that room okay and then I push the message into chat messages 
nice. And then I send back OK. And then I let everybody know that there's a new message to refresh all of their messages box. To refresh all of their messages. OK. So this doesn't make sense to me, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, because in a chat room, you can have millions and millions of messages. So you don't want to send all the messages at once. So I should do something like new message. And this new message should just be, let's do const new message equals this object. And then I push the new message into so new message is a variable containing this object, right? Name is the currently logged in user. The message is um, whatever the user typed in. So I'm going to push the object into the array. And then I'm going to admit new message, that there is a new message. So I'm going to admit a new message. OK. And now, when the user registers, right, um, when we send back, like when the user registers for, so this request is called when the user first goes into the room, right? So when the user first goes into the room, we're sending back chat room users. But we should also send in, um, send all the messages in that room in addition to the users. Which means when I register, I need to send in what room name the user is in. So request dot query dot room name. So I specify which room I want to get the message for when I register. And then after that, I will get the chat messages for the room. Here's all the chat messages. And then I would send back chat messages like this in the array. So to display the chat messages, um, after I register, I get one time all of the chat messages in the room. Let me just draw out a diagram. So when I send a request to register, so I'm going to first send the request to register whenever I've connected. And then the server would send back two things. The chat users and chat messages. And then whenever somebody sends a new chat to the server, so Let's say this browser sends a chat message to the server. So step one, pose API messages. So whenever someone sends a new chat message to the server, what my server does is to alert broadcast to everybody that there is a new message. Event using socket IO. So then this browser, I'm going, to, I'm going to first load all of the chat message and then on every new message, I want to, I need to re-render the content. Okay, so let's do that. The question is, will I keep Cerny.com alive? Um, the answer is yes, why not? Okay, so 
data structure for chat messages update. I finished that and then display chat messages when page loads. So let's do that. Display chat messages when page loads. So whenever a register comes in, I send back a list of chat messages. Okay. Cool. And then when there is a new message, I'm going to admit, hey, there's a new message for the room. Cool. So hopefully this works. Let's test it out. I'm going to restart the server. There are no errors. And I'm going to refresh the page. Since I've restarted the server, I should have logged out. So I'm going to log in. Let's look at the network request. Now I'm going to click enter chat room. Whoops. No. Oh, too late. Okay. So in the request to register, um, I'm not passing in the room name. So that's why so I'm not getting any chat messages. So let's do that. Um, so somebody joined in a slow poke. That's awesome. Yeah. The question is, keeps Sony.com alive for the last challenge? Yes. Everything would not change. It would be, Sony.com would be the last challenge. Yeah. Okay. So, on the front end, um, where it's the chat room, when I send the register request, I need to pass in another query params. So, room name is going to be room name. Then I will refresh. So this time I didn't restart the server, so I should be in the chat room. Now, let's look at register. Okay. This time, you see how there's a send a room name in the request. So let's type something. Hello world, how are you? And awesome, thank you. Now when I refresh the page, so I'm going to close this. Okay, now if I click on register here, in the response, I should have seen the chat mass messages. But, fortunately, I don't. Why is that? Did something go wrong? Hello world. So I hit enter and that sends a request. Post request. And the post request has a body with the room name and the message. And then, but when I refresh the page, So I'm going to send enter a few more times. When I refresh the page and I go to register, I don't get any chat messages. So something is not right. And whenever something doesn't go right on your server, you need to do console.log to figure out what went wrong. So when a request comes in, I look at the chat room, room name, and then maybe it helps at this point to console.log the chat room. Right, like new message receive. Look at the chat room. 
And then over here, whenever I refresh the page, when I grab the chat message, oh, I see the problem. So chat room request that body is undefined. That room name. It should be this. So I'm going to leave this in. Um, this console.log, I'm going to leave this in here, just in case that there's something wrong. And then now, we have to log in again. I'm going to do Hitmonchan. I used to love this Pokemon. Hitmonchan is a fighter. Okay, I'm the only one in here, but that's okay. I send a request to Hello World. The response looks okay. Today is July 7th. I'm going to send another request. Now when I refresh the page, in the register call, register request, Yes, I'm getting all of the requests. Yeah. Cool. So I get all of the requests. This is great. Now I just need to render the messages. See, all of these messages are added in. So this looks really good. I am going to go to the front end and then I'm going to render all of the chat messages and chat messages goes in here so here would be chat messages component but chat messages component doesn't exist how do we get the data? Hmm. So we have data.chatroom users and we also have in the request data.chat messages. So let's go to let's create a state chat messages and then set chat messages to an empty array and then when whenever the page loads for the first time we set the chat messages to the array data.chat messages so now our state always gets set and then now we want our chat messages component equal to chat messages dot map. And then this is message. I'm going to return the component, and this component is a div where the key is going to be the I um, and let's see key is going to be the I and then inside I'll need the name of the Pokemon and the message so let's do message dot name colon and then message dot value Let's see, how did I store it? Message.message .message. Okay, and then here it's going to be chat message component All right, so if everything works, I should be able to see all the chat messages. Woohoo, 
I see all the chat messages. This is good. This is good. Hmm. Now, the chat messages, this doesn't look that pretty. Um, so, I probably, let's make this prettier a little bit. So, let's give it a span. So, what should a chat message look like? At work, whenever you want some design inspiration on how things should look like, just Google for chat rooms and then click on images. Now you get to see all the images and how things look like. So this looks pretty ugly. This looks ugly. This looks really pretty. Display the image of the user and then a box with their name and what they said. This would be really cool to show. Let's do that. Let's make it pretty. So I like this one. Um, yeah. So this, for this one, I see one div over here, which we have. Inside the div, I see a user icon component and a text component. So user icon and text. So let's do um because I only have the name I need to grab the image so I need to create a new component like very similar to this um yeah so I'm going to create user icon that takes in the name and all it does is it just sends back the image that's all I want image cool and then this online user image we do chat user image let's create a CSS for this chat user image let's give it a background color of Mm, what looks good? Black. Let's do black. Black means no color. And then I like border radius to be 50%. So it's circular. So it's like a circle. And then width, make the width to be 50 pixels. And the height. Be 50 pixels. So here's user icon. Um, and just in case you forget, this is how we send the data, like get Pokemon. So I, I'm sending a GraphQL query. If you look at GraphQL query. I'm sending a Pokemon request, and the name is whatever the username is going to be. And then the response has the image, and we want that image. That's why we have this use query component, right? And here's the default image. And then as after we send the request, it takes time. So when we actually have the data, then we set the image to the actual image and we display it. Okay, so maybe I think having a div makes more sense. Um, but let's see how it looks like without a div. And then now, instead of name, we have a user icon. Where the name is going to be message.name. Okay. Let's see how this turns out. Okay, we have an error. Error is unexpected token line 83. Let's go to line 83. Ah, 
we're using JavaScript here, not CSS. So this JavaScript, got to make sure object, to end an object is comma. Wow, this looks pretty cool. It's really cool. If we set the image to 30 maybe, that would be even cooler. 30 pixels. Maybe 35 pixels. Cool, we have a new user join us. So 35 pixels looks good for me. And then, I don't know, maybe a border is going to look good. Let's see if we could do a border. Border one pixel solid and then red. Black goes well with red. Nah, it's too much. I think it's too much. I don't like the border. And then background color, I want to give it an opacity 0 0.5. I think this looks less menacing. So, yeah, 35 pixels, 0 0.5. Let's do that. So the image. is going to be 35 pixels. And then the background color, I'm going to have opacity. So I need to do RGBA stands for red, green, blue opacity. So no red, no green, no blue. That gives you black. And then 0 0.5, that means halfway opaque. Now when I refresh the page, it looks really nice. Okay. Cool. So we have a lot of messages by now, um, but this part is not done yet. So we need the actual message over here. Um, and because we need the image and then this div to be side by side, um, this div here needs to have display flex. So we need to do that. So let's give it a styles dot chat container. And this chat container should have display flex. Okay. So each chat message should have a message div and then this should have styles styles.chat container okay and in the container at the top it should say the Pokemon name so within this div there are two divs one stores the Pokemon name and one stores the message so here's the message and here's the name. All right, let's see if this works. I'm going to refresh the page. All right, so This, I put the display flex in the wrong div. It should be on the parent div over here. So that was a mistake. Let's correct that mistake. Okay, that mistake is corrected. Now I'm going to refresh the page. Hopefully, yeah, that looks a lot better. Nice. So this is the message, and then this is the um, this is the name. So I want the name to be a lot smaller. 
So let's give it a margin font size 8 pixels, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 12. Cool. And then I want the margin to be 5 pixels so that it has some margin around. Maybe this should have margin 5 pixels. So this big one should have margin length 5 pixels. The name just need a margin bottom, I think. Okay, and then here is the text. And then this whole thing should probably have a background color for the chat. So let's make this a little bit blue. So. 200 by 5, 200, 255, 0 0.5. So this is light blue, I like that. And then for border radius, 5 pixels to make it round. Um, if you guys want to see what round looks like, what I'm doing now. I made it 15, but I don't quite like it, so 10 pixels. And then now we want padding be 10 pixels. Cool. So this looks pretty nice. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. Let's do the chat message, styles.chat message, and it has all of this. Okay, style, a chat message, let's give this a margin. So everything we just did just now, um, we should, we've got to write this down. So margin, Chat message has margin left 5 pixels, margin left 5 pixels, and then it has background color, border radius, and padding. Padding 10 pixels, border radius 5 pixels, and then background color so this is um, a, not that much red not that much green a lot of blue maximum number of blue so 0 0.5 let's see if this looks good okay this looks nice. I like the way this looks. Except the name could be smaller. So I'm going to give this name a smaller size. Um, let's do font size. 12 pixels. Margin. Bottom pixels. So there is a question in the chat room that says, I can't hold a key in the text area. I have to keep type one key at a time. That's right. You cannot. So I'm holding on to a key. So thanks for finding the bug. User feedback is the most important. So I'm going to add that as a to-do item. Ta-da. Cool. What? Um, so before I lose my train of thought, the font size is 12 and margin bottom is 5. So here is a chat name. And chat name had a one margin bottom to be 5 pixels. And then font size be 12 pixels. And then maybe color, 
parlor, let's give it some opacity, like um, RGBA. 100, a little bit of red, a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, so it's gray, and then 0 0.6 to be a little bit transparent. And now we should have a beautiful chat room. Beautiful, oh no. I forgot to apply the chat name. So here should be style. Okay, so let me apply the style to chat name. And now I should have a beautiful. Oh, maybe this is too much. Maybe 0 0.6 is too much. What's 0 0.8? 9. What's that? Okay. 100, 100, 100. Okay, cool. So now this looks pretty good. Um, we have styled it. Um, I really like it. The only thing is maybe this could be vertical align center. But I don't even know how to do that and that doesn't work. Um, what if I do like align self center? Hey, I can center this. If you do align self-center, if you have a display flex parent, and if you align self-center, you can center it vertically. So see how this is vertically, these are all at the top. So that would be nice to give this a vertical center. Let's do that. CSS chat name, get rid of this. Then vertical align. Align item center that's in the user image. Align items or item? Align self. Align self. So the image is going to align self. When you have a flex parent, if you have a parent that's display flex, you can align yourself to the center and that would help you adjust vertically. So now all of the image is centered to the text. So that's good. Now the basic CSS is almost done. Um, what we, ha our, we have an issue right now where we need to scroll. So we have a lot of divs in here and this can we just scroll by setting the overflow here? Yeah, we can. Okay, so let's do that. We kind of need this to have overflow scroll so I can look at other people's messages. So, overflow auto. That will make it scroll. Is it this one? Is it content? No, it's not content. It is. I forgot. Oh, chat messages container. It's here. So when I refresh the page, I should be able to scroll. That's cool. Okay, so it's actually not so cool because right now there's a lot of messages, right? Um, actually, the UI is done, so let's mark that as complete. Display chat messages when page loads. Yes, that is done. Okay, when you leave the chat room, person should be removed. I, I think we finished that just now. We tested it also. And also, like, I see flashes of people leaving. Um, yeah, I see people leaving. So that's constantly updating. So I think that one is done, too. Um, okay, now I need... I want to do the auto-scroll when page loads and when there is a new message. 
Cool, let's do that. So to help you understand what the problem is, so the last message is this guy by Menke, right? So, hey look, someone left and they came back. So I'm going to refresh the page. And what I always see is I always see the last message that was sent. But then any new chat messages is down here. See, we just got two more new messages. So we need to auto scroll down. And to, before we do that, all of my CSS is taking up a lot of space and I'm done with my CSS. So um, I think it would help a lot if I create a new file. So touch source chat styles.js and then chat room chat styles.js so my chat styles would just create a simple object and then i'm going to export styles and then this would be coming from chat styles file and now all of the styling i can move into another file. So that's a hundred lines of code that shouldn't be in this file. So I move it away now that I'm done with the CSS so I don't have to let this file get in my way and I don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, I think now I'm going to refresh the page, make sure nothing, everything still works and it does. Cool, so I refactored that out. Now I can just concentrate on my code, right? So use effect. Every time chat messages loads, I want to auto scroll to the bottom. And to auto scroll to the bottom, I need the, what is auto scrolling? So what do I need to scroll? I need to scroll this guy, chat messages container. And since I need to scroll this guy, I need to create a variable. So refs. And this is a. F um, if you have a question on what ref is, if you remember in JS4 how you do document .query selector to get the element on the page, refs is because none of these are element; these are all React components, right? But refs helps you get the actual HTML element. So the HTML element would be passed into this function. So cons chat room ref chat messages or get chat messages ref equals a function that takes in the reference then let ref be nothing chat messages ref it's always important to have good variable names um, especially during interviews let your interviewer know that you can name variables maturely so I tend to get lazy sometimes so chat messages ref is equal to the ref that was passed in and then let's console.log or I want to test what chat messages ref is so to test things I always use window so window.chatref console.log low or ref is ready so let's see if this works. Um, and to do that, I need to refresh the page. Oh, and there's an error. Okay. I think I know what the issue is. So I created a function here, and I forgot to use the function. Yeah, chat messages ref. Okay, so here's the function. And then when React calls this function, it will pass in the reference, which is the element. Invalid value for refs. 
Okay, so I'm using it wrong, but the good news is they in the error message they're telling me, hey, here's where you go to use it correctly. Okay. Is not what I want. So maybe instead of refs, it's ref reference. Let me try my luck one more time. Hey, hey ref is ready three times. So chat ref. See chat ref. This is the element, the HTML element, right? So chat ref dot scroll. Top equals chat ref dot scroll height. Nice. This helps me scroll all the way to the bottom. So whenever ref is ready, we just need to set this. Just need to set this and then let go. Right. So here. Okay. Um, how do you know? So whenever you change the state, whenever the state is changed, this entire function runs, right? And then like chat messages is the new array. This is the new array. How do you know when this new array has changed so you can like, it's done? Um, so you can, after all the messages is rendered, it shows up on the page. Then you can set the scroll, right? So one more time, like after messages are rendered, then only then you set the scroll height. And React has a very easy way for you to do that. Just do use effect. Right, so the variable is not declared yet, so let's Put it where the variables are declared. So after the messages are rendered, then set the scroll height. So and to know when the messages are rendered, we make the second argument of use effect the state. So when this state is done rendering, then run this function. Okay, so hopefully this works. Um, let's refresh the page. Ah, oh, didn't work. Final argument pass into use effect change size between render. The order and size of this array must remain constant. Okay, I have no idea what this means. I thought it was supposed to change. So, so maybe I need to pass in an array of race. This is my best guess. Um, that makes sense to me. Pass in arrays of all the state it depends on. So I'm only depending on one state, which is the chat messages. Hey, and it worked. Look. Scroll all the way to the bottom by itself. I'm going to refresh the page again. Yeah, it scrolled all the way to the bottom by itself. So cool. Awesome. Now, when I type in a new message, um, nothing happens. So when I type in a new message, I need to know when there's a new message, right? So to do that, I just create a socket. So socket.on. So whenever I have a new message, I console.log new message. Okay, let's see if this works. I'm going to refresh the page, and now whenever someone sends a new message, I should cons get a console.log. Hey. 
So I get the name and the message. This is cool. So now anytime someone types something, I'll get the name and the message. Hopefully. I haven't seen any new ones so far. I'm gonna hope it works. And then, whenever I get a new message, I want to set chat messages and I pass in a new chat messages array with another element. So dot 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 creates like spreads this out and I create a new array here. So now if everything works, whenever somebody sends me a new message, it should automatically update. But that's disappointing. Now I only see one message ever. Okay. Whenever I get a new message, I'm setting an array of messages plus the new message. What could go wrong? So console.log chat messages. Hitmonlee. Maybe I should choose another Pokemon. I'll have better luck. Okay, chat messages. I have an array of all the chat messages. That is good. So... Hit enter. Oh, and now chat messages just became one element. Zubat. Zubat set looks good. So every time I get a new message, when I call set chat messages, I'm creating a new array. But chat messages is not a new array. It's an old array. Oh. Oh no. Okay, so this is a very tricky React issue. This is a very tricky React issue. Hmm. So, the reason why this is happening is it's very tricky. So, if chat messages renders two times, right? Let's say the first time it renders, when the page loads for the very first time, Page loads for the first time. It's important to understand this. Um, yeah, it's important to understand this if you want to get good at React. So, when the page lo loads for the first time, there is no chat messages, right? Because the request hasn't been sent yet. Sent. So, chat messages is going to be. An empty array right and then when you run use effect that's when chat messages is empty array so you call use effect and you pass in the use effect and you have a function in here right and then the page loads again for the second time so Page load for the first time and then page loads for second time. What happens is now maybe chat message is an array of one, two, three, four, five, and then you call use effect again. But because your argument is still an empty array, just like the first time, right? The second time is never run. Right? And then if the page re renders now with Chat messages being one, two, three, four, five, four, nine, eight, seven, one, two, three, four, five, and you call use effect with an empty array as the second argument, like 
like in here, it would also never run. So then when this socket dot on, when this function runs, this function is running over here. And the scope of ch chat messages is an empty array. Which is why chat messages is always an array of one element. Yeah, so it's a very tricky problem. And I think if I am interviewing somebody for a React problem, I would ask them this problem to see if they really know use effect. And then maybe a really good React engineer would teach me how to do it correctly because I have no idea. And so since I don't know how to use it, how to solve this problem the React way, but because my foundations are really good, I can solve this issue by doing global chat message equals an object. And then now, whenever I have new chat messages, I can do global chat message dot room at index room name equal chat messages this way um since i have this issue right i solve it by putting a global variable called global chat message so now i have a global variable and every time chat messages changes this global chat messages change, right? So first time it's an empty array, the second time it will be one, two, three, four, five, and the third time it will be nine, eight, seven, one, two, three, four, five. Right? I just have a global variable, so this would solve the problem for me. Um, but I don't know how to fi fix it. I I think there's a better way to do this, but. This is how I plan to solve it. So, global message at index room name. So now, whenever I have a new message, I do global chat messages at index room name. Cool. And this should solve our problem. Okay. Problem solved. Yeah. Problem is solved. So if if you're doing an interview and you're not very good at React, but if you can come up with your own solution that solves the problem, and even yeah, even if you don't know how to solve it correctly, if you're able to think and understand the problem during an interview and eventually come up with your own solution that the you know that helps you get around the problem. It would actually, it's good for you. It's not a bad thing because when you interview, you're not expected to know everything about everything. So they want, they just want to make sure that people can think on their feet. And how to use React and libraries correctly, um, someone can just tell you the answer. So it's very quick to learn. I think what interviewers are always looking for is can somebody think? Is somebody's foundation strong so they can think on their feet and solve problems? So now our chat room seems to be good to go. Um, now I think we just need to add a, in a few polish. Where if I hit enter, this should go away. So need to when I hit enter everything should go away so I should clear I should clear the input value and um, one easy way to do that since I have the chat messages um, so there's two ways to do this one is to have a state 
I think in the previous exercises, I've just been using the, the state to get the input value. But I think another way to do it is to use ref. So this is less commonly used. So get text area ref. So I'm going to do the same thing, like get text area ref. So if I can get the actual text area HTML, then you know, there's nothing we can't do. Text area ref is the ref. And now whenever someone hits enter, you just set text area ref dot value, an empty string. So where am I hitting enter? Text area ref dot value equals an empty string. So now does this auto clear? Does. But unfortunately, um, we want to set it after we send the request. So we're not like a new. Cool, so we are done, except, let's see. So how to add chat messages and data structure. So now let me, I'm going to leave the chat room and I'm going to join a different chat room. So I'm going to join front end engineering to chat room. So now if I go to front end engineering, there's nobody here. Press one to chat. The question is how to leave chat room. <laughs> we haven't built the feature to leave the chat room. So you have to go to cerny.com and start over. Start over. Yeah. So I think it would be nice because on the left side, it shows all of the online user. What I want to do, I think one of the users brought up a good point where you can't leave the chat room. So it would be nice if I can see what chat room all the users are in. So if I can see which chat room Zubat is in, um, that would be really cool. So I'm going to do that. How to do, figure out which chat room the user is in. Um, data structure for chat messages update, like all the update is done. Add chat messages, we are done. Auto scroll, yes, we are done. And then before I get to this one, um, display um, the chat rooms users are in. Okay, so let's do that. I want to see which chat room Zubat is in. So this needs a server change, so everybody's going to be logged out for a while. Um, because our server, we need to store. So chat room users has all of the objects. Chat room users are all of the names. So I think what we need to do is have the name and the chat room. Yeah, I don't want just the name. I want the name and the chat room that the user is in. So could we make chat room users? So I'm thinking Right now, chat room users is very simple. The key and the value is there. The key is chat room users and the value is the name. So I was thinking 
of either creating a new object where the name of the socket IO corresponds with which chat room the user is in. Um, that might make sense. Or if I make this an object. But whenever you change your code and you're changing your data type from a string to an object, everything might break. So to save yourself from everything breaking, I think I need to save my changes first. So git add 1.js, git add source, git commit, solves, it doesn't solve, um, working chat room, and with chat message updates. Okay, so if I make a commit, then whenever I make a change, if things go wrong, I can still bring it back. Oops. So one dot JS. Let's look at how we're doing chat room users. Okay, so chat room users is that. And then whenever someone registers, I need to pass change that to a name and room name. Okay. Cool. Take out the console.log and then send back chat room users and let everybody know that they're new users. Okay, that's it on the server side. Let me restart the server. Okay, now on the front end, things are not going to be working anymore. Because when I set online users, Online users is going to be an object. So, new user. I get events like new user and user disconnect. So, let me make sure that. Okay, so these are going to be okay. So, now online users is an array of objects, not an array of strings anymore. So set online users. Okay. It's an array of objects. And then we need to see how online user is being used. And it's here. So online user has user. And we're passing the user. So user data is going to be user. We'll keep that as name and do user.name do room name equals user dot room name. Okay. So now we have name and room name here. Um, we go back to our user object. And then here is the name, right? We get the name of the user, but I think we also want a URL, so an A tag would be slash chat rooms. Room name. Room name is passed in as a prop. Okay, so now I'm going to log in again because there's server side changes, so I'm logged out. This time I'm going to be, um, since I'm about to be done, Mewtwo.
Wow, Mewtwo Mega. Never seen this before. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to enroll in arrays. And then I'm going to enter the chat room. Hey, so now it shows who is in which chat room. This is cool. So yeah, I can see this person is in Foundations of JavaScript, right? And then if we make this font size a little smaller, oh, person left. Yay, it's back. So font size is going to be. 12 pixels. Let's make this smaller. And so if you look here, it's it looks really like messed up. Um, basically, the H4 needs to have margin of zero, right? That would be better. And then since all of these are um, all of these are inside a display flex. You can vertical align it by doing align self to be center. Right. This can also have align self to be center. So. Cool. Okay, now this would look a lot better if this has a margin right of actually top and bottom is zero and then left and right would be five pixels. So now there's some space in between these two. So I, I think once I add in the CSS, I'll be done. If I click on this person, so right now I'm in arrays array chat nice I'm in array chat now if I click on this um, the chat room that this person is in I'm gonna click on it and I should now be oh no there's a bug here cool time to fix the bugs slash here and then this needs to have a style style dot user online username and then this will have a style of style dot online user room in this room I think it would be nice to have a parentheses around it so people would know they're in that room and now we need these styles so chat styles styles dot online user image nope. what did i call it Online username is an object, and this online username we talked about it. If I can remember, it's align self center, so it's vertically center. Um, oops, I'm not in the page, so I don't even remember. Margin is going to be zero and five pixels. Okay. And that's it. And then next is online user room. Let's give it a margin left of five pixels. Also align self center, but also f smaller font size of px. So if I remember all of this CSS correctly, 
Um, let's go back into the array lessons. Oh no, I have an error. Style is not defined. Styles. A lot of mistakes. Nice. So I can see all the users and which um, chat room they're in. And if I click on the chat room, I join them in the chat room. Yay. Now I join them in the chat room. Cool. Hello, Foundation. Yeah, so it seems to work out really well. Um, and also, how to leave chat room. I think if we do like a back button over here, or leave chat room over here, that might make sense. Top left. So let's create a button on the top left to leave the chat room. So leave chat room just takes the user to the root. Leave chat room. And then I want like a um, greater than sign or less than sign. Two of them. Okay. Yeah, so leave chat room. And then styles, style equal, styles.leave. Okay, and we want the styles.leave to have position absolute. Top negative five pixels and then left five pixels. I don't know why I did negative five, I meant five. Messages go to all chat rooms no matter which chat room you're in. That is a bug. I thought I was missing something. Right, so that is a bug. So these, the bug is with the, it, when we have a bug, it's important to know where, it, where the bug is coming from. So thanks for pointing it out. We have a leave chat room and it looks like it works, but it's really ugly. Oh my gosh, it's so ugly. Font size, let's do 10 pixels. We don't want users to really leave the chat room, so let's make this really small. Okay. And when I leave the chat room, I left, I've left the chat room. So font size, 10 pixels. And Okay, so I'm going to enter the Arrays chat room. So now when I enter the Arrays chat room, I shouldn't see... Oh no, did I do something wrong? Error. Unexpected. Always make this mistake. So it's not CSS, it's JavaScript, so I cannot use semicolon. Okay, so if I go to Array chat, um, I can only see array chat. But the problem is when I leave the chat room and I go to foundations, let me go to foundations. So if I go to foundations, I don't see any of the chat in the raise chat, right? 
However, if anyone sends a new message, um, the problem is in the server side. So let's go to server. The server, whenever on the server side, whenever there is a new message, I'm sending it to everybody, right? Emit new message to everybody. So if everybody is on a different room, everybody would get the new message. So I don't want that. I want only people in that room to get the message for that room, right? That would make more sense. And that's the last important piece of, okay, so that's the last important piece of socket IO that I think needs to be covered. So if you go to socket IO docs, okay, and there is something called rooms. You can call join to subscribe the socket to a given channel. So on your server, I can make the socket join a certain room. Okay. And then I can broadcast to that room. Wow. Is that all it takes? Just to that room so whenever somebody comes in I can make them join a certain room okay. that's interesting so I see a problem here where it has to be socket.join that room so if you do socket dot join that room, how do you get the socket, right? Like, for example, when the user first comes in, right? Here's the socket. Here's the socket, and then afterwards, you no longer have the socket. So now, when the user registers, how do you make that socket subscribe to that room, and? To solve that problem, you use const sockets. So I create a new object called sockets. Sockets. Um, and sockets would keep track of all the sockets based on socket IDs. So whenever I have a new socket, then sockets at index socket.id equals the socket object itself. This socket object is really important. So this is really important because we want the socket to join a certain room. Right, so here's the socket ID. And then that's a socket. And then when I when a user leaves, I want to delete it that user from the sockets. So now we have the socket object in the sockets key. So now when the user registers, when the user registers, I can get the socket. So const socket equals sockets at index query dot socket id so I get the socket object and then socket dot join I join that room name so the room name is going to be room name so now the socket joins the room name and then now um, whenever there's a new message that comes in it doesn't admit to everything it admits to a room so to which room to rack.body.room name okay this is really um i i haven't tested this so let's test it and cross our fingers and hope that it works
so I'm going to delete, close all this. Now I need to log in again. This time I'm going to log in as Raichu. Whoa, actually, what is Masquerain? It's pretty cool. It's like a butterfly. I'm gonna log in as Masquerain into the variables chat room. And now when I'm in the variables chat room, can I still chat with people? Oh no. I no longer get any messages. Oh, this is not good. Okay, so... io2someroom.admit That's what we did. We admitted an event. Every socket in the room excluding. Okay. Let's see if we So this is not good because we the socket joined the room and we admitted it to a room but then I'm in the room and I didn't get a message so what does it mean to not get the message Maybe it's some front-end code. So all of these, um, if you're going to use socket IO one day, you're going to have the same issue. So my socket. So to debug this, I'm going to do window.mysocket equals socket. Maybe I have to join on the client side, on the front-end as well. And then when I get a new message, I want to console.log new message which probably I wouldn't get so let's see um, my socket dot join there is no join function and when someone sends a new message I obviously don't get the message so now we are stuck. Maybe I'm not understanding the room and how to work how it works correctly. So IO dot on connection this is server side. And then it admits to that user high. Okay. So it's io.2.admit. dot two dot admit. Let's look at the server side code. Io dot two room name admit. New message. So console.log emitting event to body dot name. Okay, and then I have a feeling that maybe register didn't work correctly. So console.log socket. socket rec.query.socket id so this socket is joining room name okay Let's see 
going to have to restart the server so everyone will be disconnected again. Let's try Zapdos. Zapdos. Crazy bird. Okay. So I'm going to enroll into this chat room and the server should say Socket L3 is joining Foundations of JavaScript. Okay. So did I just join the Foundation of JavaScript? New message received. Foundations of JavaScript. So emitting event to Foundations of JavaScript. Wow, what a miracle. Well, everything started working like magic, so let me just, I'm going, I'm testing on a different browser, and in this browser, I'm going to a different chat room, and I'm going to send some messages. and nothing was received there so i'm going to join this guy's chat room and now it works cool Seems like our chat room works, and then there's a leave chat room button. So, messages go to chat room no matter which chat room you're in. We solved that one issue. And so, just to recap, because we got stumped a little bit, um, what we did the first thing we need to do to separate it out is we need to have an object. This object key is socket ID. So the key is the socket ID here. The socket ID represents the person that's connecting. And then the value is the socket object. And then obviously when the person disconnects, we delete that person. And then when the person registers to a chat room, then what we want to do is we want to get out the socket. So we get the socket object and then we join. The room so now that user is in that room so we join the user and now every time we emit a new event like when we receive a new message we do io.2 so specifically to this room i want to admit a new message yeah and then everything is more or less done um Except for this issue, I can't hold down a key in the text area of the chat room. But this problem exists in Kanban board also. So then I need to do some research to see by research I just meant. I'm going to look at some JS4 challenges. I want to see if it's a HTML issue or a React issue. Oh. So I can't do it here either. So it seems like the problem is not a React issue. It's yeah, it's not an HTML issue either. And I don't think don't think it's a problem that should be solved that we need to solve like I think about who would do this and it's only spammers who would just want to do this 
But if you really want to type something a lot of times, you can do Command A to copy it, Command C, Command A to select everything, Command C to copy, and then you can paste it a lot of times. And then you copy it again, and now you double. So you can do that. So I don't see this as a good user experience. So I'm going to delete this issue. Cool. And now all of our issues are done. So get status. So, um, finishes JS challenge six or challenge eight. Let's see what challenge it is. Challenge eight. So since I have yarn.log changes and I don't want people to um, and I don't want people to see this, I go to master and then I add yarn.log. Get add. Add yarn.log changes. Now I go back to problem 8 folder where everything is still here and then I merge master into my problem 8 branch and then now I can submit so problem 6, GS6, problem 8 and then the question is how to leave chat room and to leave a chat room Let's see, let me enter the chat room. Okay. Oh wow. Good job with the emojis. So to leave a chat room, you just click leave chat room. And then you have left the chat room. So now, since we're in this chat room, I think what would be really fun is to have an actual submit button. Um, And it would be cool to be able to render Markdown, so that would be really cool. So to render Markdown, um, you just do like Markdown React. So let me show you guys how to get other React components that you can use. So this, whenever I pick an open source library, this guy build a React component that has 5.6 thousand. 5.6 thousand people use like it. So then to add it, we just do yarn add react markdown. So this is cool. Yarn add react markdown. And then basically, um, and to use their component. So this is a component that somebody else made. We want to use a component that other people made. So, cool. We're going to use this component called React Markdown. And let's see what they give you. So, to use it, you just use their component. And so now, instead of displaying message.message, .message, I'm going to display Markdown. Markdown input would be message dot message. Cool. So now we have a markdown. Okay. And then now, um, if I refresh the page, cool. So everything has markdown now. So when I type markdown. Yeah, I can type markdown. So I can do code samples. But unfortunately, I can't hit enter anymore. Nice. So if you want to put an image, 
um, an image, you could right click copy image location. So in Markdown, an image is bang image URL or ink hits. Yeah, you can send images as well. So that's pretty cool. So now we have Markdown, you can render Markdown. Yep, and if you want to paste in a link, you can do code.com, code, and then https, code.com is complete. So now you can paste in link and everything. So this is marked down. Okay. Um, what else? So sometimes what people do is they have they sometimes have an input button over here an input button down here um and to do that we need a text area so here's the text area and then So here's the text area, and then sometimes um, if you want to give it a button, you can do button submit and then style text submit. So let's look at how text submit would look like. Text submit would be right would be zero, maybe like twenty pixels, and then bottom would also be twenty pixels. No height, none of that. And let's see how this looks like. So I have the submit button over here. It looks kind of janky, but I think it's good enough. Um, and I'm going to change the code to use the submit button more. Um, this way I can, I want to be able to, thanks, thank you. This way I want to be able to hit submit button and so cursor pointer that bugs me in a weird way and then i think this is too high up so maybe 20 pixels was not such a good idea so 10 pixels is a better idea so now we have to submit button it's good and then I'm trying to see in the text area, when I write a long text, I don't want my input to overwrite that. So what if I give it a padding right of 100 pixels? So if I give it a padding right of 100 pixels, I would never I would never overwrite the submit button. So, so that's interesting to know that if I have a padding right of 80 pixels, I'll never overwrite the submit button. And then now for the submit on click, so const submit click equals a function and then on click equals submit click 
So when you click on the submit button, then we want to send the request and set the text to zero, to nothing. So this, and then we don't need input change anymore. Whoa. Maybe just leave it there. So now my enter doesn't do anything anymore. I can write a passage. Write a passage. And then const alert equals function const js equals zero if js is equal to six return complete otherwise return back to this js plus one Okay, so I wrote some simple code, it should be practice. Put some simple code and then I can click on submit. Oh, fail. Okay, when I click on submit, nothing happened. So I'm going to copy all this text. Okay. Submit, click. So how come when I click on click, nothing happens? This is so weird. Comes that log. Nothing. So I'm going to click on submit. E is not defined. So submit click. E is not defined. So I do text area ref. Okay. Cool. Oh no. Okay, now I think we're completely done. We even have markdown support now. Um, so if I paste in what I had before and then click submit, all of my HTML stuff works. Um, on the left, yeah. You can see users coming in and going out. Okay, cool. So I'm going to click on submit. Okay, this marks the end of code run. And yeah, here's a working chat room. Thanks for watching. See you guys. Later.